Okay. Oh, oh, I'm I'm rec I'm rec recording it. So now I go on to live on a cat. No, no, I wasn't recording that whole time. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> um, yes, uh, welcome to episode ninety-four of of the Mind Heist podcast. Been a minute or two, but uh, we're here. We're still always hovering around. And mm. uh, yeah, Muhammad, salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. I'm Alaikum honest. I'm still trying to work out what's different about you. You just look different. Sleepy somehow. boys. I look. I just look sleepy, bro. And this this blurry camera. I need to invest in what you've got. Mm. Yeah, but you know, but I when I first saw you, because I haven't seen you for a few weeks, right? Yeah. You looked like fresh somehow. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no man. Inshallah, did, did did my wudu before the podcast, bro? Maybe that's yeah. what. It is. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, man. So. Uh, we're out here, podcasting out here. And, you know, we, we, you know, if you think about it, bro, we outlived many podcasts. I mean, I, I guess I'm not really following that many, but I feel like we outlived many. I feel like there were about three or four that I had my eyes on. And when yeah. I looked at them a few months ago, uh, it's like, oh, last upload a year ago, last upload seven months ago. Mm. So, you know, we're still here, bro. We, we're nearly yeah. at episode 100. So no, actually, that. I didn't think about that. It's really good. Well. That episode with Faisal was a bit nuts, so really good response to that. Alhamdulillah. Oh, yeah, we did. I forgot we even did that. SubhanAllah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lost, bro. Yeah. I don't, you know, but the thing is, I still don't think about it. Like, I think, um, I suppose we, I don't think about how much we've done in terms of 94 is a lot, you know. I don't yeah. think about it too much. I don't think too deeply about an audience and that. I just sort of think about it as having a conversation with you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That might be what makes it good. But uh, yeah, alhamdulillah. I'm happy, man. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, cool. So the, the topic might be a short topic, but we'll, we'll see what we do with it. So the topic that, uh, you know, we, we have today is, you know, I don't, I don't really know what to, to call it. Maybe we could call it um, quote unquote. Um, what's that word, bro? Uh, sec um Double standards. That's it. Double standards. Oh. Um, so the background of this is that obviously Khabib, the the uh, Chechen uh, MMA fighter, MMA is or he UFC. Chechen? Is he Chechen? Yeah, he's Chechen. Chechen. He's from Dagestan. Is that in, that's? Yeah, that's in che that's in Chechnya. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Also known as Shishan. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, if if no one knows what that is, that's. Um, what I know about that uh, part of the world is uh, it's officially part of Russia, but it's, uh, you know, semi uh, autonomous governance kind of thing. Um, OK. And basically, you know, it's a Muslim you know, area um, that was obviously taken by Russia at some point in history. I don't know. It could have been quite a while ago, maybe a, a hundred, a hundred or two years ago. I'm not really sure. Uh, but still fishy part of Russia. And it's uh, governed by uh, a Muslim guy, a guy from that area, you know. Um, but what I've heard is like he kind of just is the representative of uh, Putin or whatever for them. Right. You know? um, so, it, you know, in my my impression of it is like, like I don't know, Shishan, you know, when you hear Shishan, it's like, yeah, they're, these are like tough guys. They fought off the Russians, this and that. And there's a lot of Yanni uh, resistance going on over in that part of the world and stuff. So that's what I know of it. That's what I think of it as Yanni, because it's also near... Where is it near? I think yeah, it's near uh, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan, where there's a there's a kind of a war kicking off there now. Are you aware right. of that, Mohammed? Yeah, yeah, I saw bits of that actually. Yeah, that's an interesting one as well. Because that that was a war which was uh, it it was there was a war not, I think it was like a couple of years long. I don't think it was that long, but it was um, between Azerbaijan and Armenia in the 80s, I think, mm. and uh, it's like unfinished business. That's why it's kicking off again. Um, I don't know exactly what triggered it, but yeah, um, basically, yeah, Chechnya is north of that area, you know, it's the Caucasus area, yeah. I'm looking at it, it looks like Dagestan is its own separate thing, so it's Dagestan, it borders Chechnya. Okay, Dagestan, let me just see what, yeah, okay. I wasn't getting it completely wrong. <laughs> I, was I didn't, like, want, I I didn't want to get flamed in the comments, bro. <laughs> I didn't want to yeah. get flamed, bro. People, people yeah. are passionate about where they're from, you know. So. Yeah, no, but it's uh, well, you know, it's part of the world. Is like uh, I think 
it'll be good for us to learn about it because even even you know uh, in terms of our history right obviously all these areas are muslim parts of the world like chechnya uh, azerbaijan you know muslim uh, i don't know in terms of in the past armenia and georgia obviously these are not muslim countries today but i wonder what that was like in the past and then obviously you've got turkmenistan uzbekistan kazakhstan all of those they're all muslim you know areas of the world all the way until china which is the, mm. you know the area that is been coming up in the news uh jinjiang or however you say that i'm not sure exactly how to say that but um or they you know they call it east uh turkmenistan Tur turkistan right east mm. turkistan so all that is like muslim bro it's a huge huge area of the world um today it's uh it's like a huge area tons of gas you know kazakhstan has some of the biggest gas reserves in the world and it's also a huge country kazakhstan like in area it's like mm. top 10 in terms of land mass and they also have apparently a lot of rare what they call them uh, rare earth minerals or something you know lithium and these kind of things that apparently oh, right, yeah. like you need a lot of this stuff for stuff like I don't know processors and chips and stuff like that apparently mm. so uh it's it's a big part of the world and um what i heard is basically you see turkey is next to azerbaijan kind of right uh yeah. so turkey Tur turkey and turk turkic people that's the same people as in kazakhstan and uzbekistan etc right they're all turkic so there is that sense of uh you know we're all one people so if you could have a physical connection you know between all these then that could become something of a you know regional unity kind of thing uh but right now what's blocking that from happening is armenia's in the way <laughs> basically right. so yeah. if, if armenia wasn't there then it'll be fully connected you know, obviously you got the caspian sea in the way but you can just get through mm -hmm. that with boats or whatever so uh it's interesting Achie. it's interesting if it, it feels like since trump's been the president he kind of but he kind of uh, turned his focus away from what's going on in the rest of the world. And it allowed people to like make moves and like, okay, the U S isn't looking, let me like do this. Yeah, and yeah. That. Yeah. So it's interesting. Oh yeah. The, the U S elections were recently as well. Were you, were yeah. you paying attention to that at all? Somewhat. Yeah, I was somewhat. Um, only because of the, there's just chaos that ensued and what was going on over there. It was still going on, I suppose. The, mm -hmm. It's just I don't know, man. They're meant to be the the flag bearers of democracy, and they just can't even get that right. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. simple sort. Of, I mean, I, I wouldn't know. I'm not. I don't. You know, obviously, I don't really care about either one of them. I care obviously about the impacts. Yeah. But I don't. You know, I don't support either one of them. I just yeah. think it's. I just think it's full of irony and just it's entertaining to watch sometimes. Really, it is kind of crazy. Like, you would imagine that it would be something like you could have some kind of system like an ATM thing where you come, uh, maybe have some kind of ID card or scan some kind of ID or maybe be even, okay, I know in the US, many countries, they don't have ID cards, right? Like in the UK, there's no yeah. ID card, right? But you could have something where it's like, um, you go to an office and you give your ID and then they give you a unique barcode, for example, for you to vote. Then you go to an ATM kind of setup, you scan that barcode and then you vote. And it's all yeah. like digital and, you know, purely digital. Obviously, you know, I think what I've heard is when you do everything digital, it does become vulnerable to hacking and stuff. But yeah, I guess that's just 2020. Like, what can you do? Right. But yeah, yeah you yeah. would imagine that uh, the US or whatever, they would have a system like that was like fully digital voting, no manual counting. You know, I, I don't know if that, that sounds like more foolproof to me, but mm. maybe it's not. I don't know. I think the whole concept of, the whole the, the whole concept of a four year thing is so silly to me. I think you can't do anything in four years. So people, mm. there's no so good it, it it right, bro. No, but like in general, <laughs> in general, leaders don't. You don't. What societies have survived or progressed through like constant four year fluctuations of leadership? Yeah, good where point. It, it just doesn't really happen. And mm. like I was reading an article earlier about NASA and like NASA continuously plans like missions and stuff like what yeah. I consider advances in, 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 you know, space exploration and just scientific exploration in general, mm. but like the funding just keeps coming and then going and coming yeah. and going every, every four years. Like, well, you've got a process that takes years and years and years to get to that point. Like they, they're apparently one of the, so like one thing that Trump did, for example, was like 
I don't know, he must have given some funding for some Artemis project, it's called, but I don't know where they were going to go, but they were planning something big, right? Maybe it was like re-landing on the moon or something like that, something mm. to that scale. So they're all excited. And then now, like, Biden must have lied out, lied, um, laid out his plans. And mm. part of that, I think, was to allegedly cut the funding again. It's just like every, it's just back and forth all the yeah. time. And I know, you know, it's not the best example, but you can imagine that copied onto loads of yeah, other like, things. Yeah, uh, like, for example, uh, a big train project, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. This is it. So, like, it's just, yeah, it's just a bit of a flawed system. I'm not yeah. saying it like I've made some amazing revelation now mm. and I've discovered democracy is flawed, but yeah. it's um, it's certainly not the way mm. that things should be done. But it also reminds you that, because I was thinking if there was voting in the UAE, for example, it would be fully digital. It would be just put your ID card in the machine and do your thing and you're done, right? It would mm. definitely be like that. Um, but that's what because, you know, the UAE is a newer country and it's a small country. But when, when you think of the US, it's like 320 million people. Uh, is it like the third biggest country in the world or something? Mm. And yeah, and it's, it's uh, even though, you know, you might see them as very advanced and this and that, but yeah, he is difficult. It's ex- difficult. It's expensive. It's yeah. crazy to do to do something on a national scale in the US is just nuts, you know. Just yeah, nuts. yeah, yeah. And um, it, it also shows you how, uh, I guess, divided the country is. You know. Oh, extremely. Uh, I was uh, I was looking at like some analysis of the results, and um, it actually I was surprised how fifty fifty it was at the beginning, but um, what they were saying was that. You know, some of these people who are voting for, because you don't, do you vote for the, the candidate or do you vote for the party? I think the party, right? I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it might be the candidate, but I could be wrong. Okay. Regardless, it's a bit anyway, both. So they were saying that these people, some of them voting for Trump or Republican Party, whichever it is, then their, their vote is for one issue. Right. So they might not be with Trump when it comes to most of the issues. But for example, they're sick of uh, PC culture, so they just vote for mm. Trump, you know, or they're sick of X, Y, Z. So they pick like they'll vote based on one issue that they're kind of just sick, sick of, and that's how yeah. someone like Trump, who people would feel like he's a bit extreme and he would only get a bit of the thing, he actually got a lot of votes, right? Uh, yeah. Because of that, it's like I'm not necessarily uh, Republican through and through. I'm not necessarily with him on so many things, but I'm just sick of this one thing. Let me vote for him for that reason, you know. It's it's difficult, man. I don't know, like, I don't know what the mindset of the Muslims are over there. I'd love to know, like, for example, someone like Sharif, right? I'd like to know his perspective uh, because I know that he's like, mm. um, he's uh, he's a you know a bit of a he was was he uh, was he was he a marine? He was a marine at one point, yeah. And then he you know, he's he's um I think he's pro gun gun laws whatever i think he made a comment once about having guns and stuff which is perfectly fine like i get that perspective you know but then i know there's a lot of muslims that are anti that and they lean more towards like the democratic angle and i and i i personally like obviously i don't really rate both of them but like i'm more comfortable Mm. as a muslim i know it's really sometimes backwards but i'm more comfortable with trump as a muslim because i can at least i don't have to like I don't have to think too deeply about how how much he's lying to me or what he's after, or what his goals are. Do you, yeah. do you understand what I mean? It's like you got you got Biden, yeah. Everything is all flipping, you know, all, all rosy and all great and stuff. But yeah. like under the table, he's he's probably doing something shady, and and that's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah. it's the same with Obama. Like they said about Obama, how he's a great speaker, and I'm not lying, he's a good politician. He appears well, he speaks well, he, he carries himself like a good politician does, but like they also say that you know, he signed on like the most sort of drone strikes ever than president before him, like of course, which yeah. inevitably killed loads of Muslims. The thing that I loved about Trump was like you said earlier, like he just uh, focused on America and like left everyone else alone. Um, yeah. I, I love that. And th- this is where I think we, we split from US Muslims because uh, for me, you know, I'll be open. I don't mind. I, I think it will upset American Muslims, but I was fully with Trump. Like I definitely, I was hoping that Trump would win um, because I, I believe that that is better for the overall Muslims. I don't know. I, I really don't know, but I know the, the perception is that for Muslims in the U S Trump is worse. 
That's the perception. I I don't know, obviously, if it's true or not, but I know that yeah. most Muslims in America who voted, they probably would have voted for Biden, etc. But I'm, for me, Trump, two reasons he's better is he leaves the rest of the world alone generally. Now, he, hmm. he does let certain countries in the Muslim world do his dirty work for him in a way. But yeah. overall, I find that that's probably better for the for the Muslim world. The second thing is, I just like you know, someone who's straight up and direct. And Islam hates us, all right? Islam hates us, terrible people, you know? The, the thing is, as well, like, I don't like the thought of... Um, like, if, if he says that, if he says Islamophobic rhetoric, right, that's fine because it galvanizes Muslims against that. And then yeah. Muslims are suddenly united against this thing. But then the moment you've got some other politician who's like, oh, no, Islam's great, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then suddenly you lose half of your Muslim population to that rhetoric. Suddenly they're in love with the guy. And then when he's doing stuff that is anti-Islam, like and against Muslims on a world scale, yeah. the people that shout against him aren't going to have mm. the most, like, aren't going to have the backing or the unity that they would have had prior. You get me? Like when, yes. when, if Trump one day, for example, decided to go to war with a Muslim country, plus he was Islamophobic in his rhetoric anyway, mm -hmm. then all Muslims could unite and agree that that's bad. Mm. But then when you've got like, oh, for example, hypothetically, you've got someone like Joe Biden coming in and, and cutting the ribbon off a new mosque somewhere, but then like blowing up another one. And I'm like, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the people locally are going to be like, oh yeah, he's great. Look what he's doing. And then- yeah. Other it's dirty bro yeah it's dirty yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. and even even uh if you take the muslim side out of it right um the democrat democratic party is supposed to be traditionally pro-immigration right like allowing people to come in refugees asylum asylum seekers stuff let them in and stuff but obama deported like more people than anyone else i think in previous terms mm. right mm. so it, that's the thing even even when it comes to not necessarily muslim issues um obama was sneakily doing what people thought he wouldn't do you know yeah, so yeah yeah i much prefer the direct thing um yeah it's the yeah. same with like i i get the stuff there is you know understandably there's going to be yeah. suffering from the population of muslims within america yeah. Uh, and under certain sort of empowerment that, you know, it empowers racist rhetoric, it empowers that sort of stuff. And I get that. And I, yeah. I agree. I'm not denying that. And that's for that reason, it's bad. But it's one of those things as well, where it's like, where do, like, do we, do you ever think like America is going to be a Muslim country one day? No, I don't think so. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, it could happen. I'm not saying mm. it won't. They're like, but how I'm saying you like, expecting it to get. Yeah, you can't expect to have your cake in, in America and your cake in the Muslim Ummah as well. And, and mm. everyone's great. Like, it's not really going to happen like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, like when black and white, bro. If you want the US to stop meddling in our countries, then you're going to kind of have to hope that the US goes downhill economically. Mm -hmm. And if you're living in the US, that's not going to be good for you, right? Yeah. yeah. So black and white, you're going to have to kind of pick one, in it? Yeah, and especially when it comes to like, I mean, look what's happening with France at the moment and what Macron is doing and the speech that's coming out of there. Boycott like, France. Hmm? Boy, hashtag boycott France. <laughs> bro, I've always been boycotting France, bro, since the beginning of my days. Mm. <laughs> but um, no, for real, bro, like uh, you can't, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like liberty can only go to some extent before it bumps heads with Islam, no matter where you are in the world, yes. in that sense. And I'm not talking about liberty as in literal liberty. I'm talking well, their concept of what liberty means, um, like you, you're forcing freedoms down people's throats in the name of freedom and democracy. But it's only your version of that that you accept, not everybody else's version. Yeah, you know, w women, 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 women state that they liber they feel liberated when they're wearing when they're wearing what Islam, you know, legislates for them. But then that's not the understanding of liberation in their eyes. So yeah, in that way, in yeah. that way, they don't agree with it. So we shouldn't even play with their game of uh, liberty being that important necessarily. Uh, that's no. their game. You know, we don't need to argue that we're more free than you. We have more liberty than you because that would make uh, us value being uh, value liberty as much as they do. And we don't necessarily. What we value is pleasing Allah. So that's not like our number one kind of metric for how good something is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, bro, you know, I resigned to the fact that Biden was going to win because I saw this little clip, random clip on YouTube where they got this guy who had correctly 
are predicted every president of the last, I don't know, years, like 40 years. He never right. got it wrong. And he's, he actually had a whole framework and a method of how he predicts. So it wasn't, it's not just like uh, guessing or whatever. And yeah, he said, you know, Biden's going to win. So I thought, you know what? I, I, whatever, <laughs> this guy's going to be right, you know? So I, I, was, I already resigned to the fact he's going to win. Yeah. Well, let's see what he does, inshallah, yani, inshallah khair. Uh, I think as while Trump's been in power, there's been certain changes in the Muslim world and positive changes and some negative, but, you know, we'll see, inshallah. The world is a bit different, I think, to 20 years ago in terms of power is more spread out, isn't it? So, khair, mm. inshallah. Yo, we, I just realized we went on a huge tangent. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, bro. Alhamdulillah, yeah. So it's we were talking is. about uh, Chechnya, right? <laughs> were we? We're talking um, about Dagestan. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. So it says he's Dagestani, not Chechen. Oh. Bro, I know my stuff, bro. Listen. Yeah. So let me search Chech, uh, Chechnya in. Um... Oh, Chechnya is inside of Dagestan. I, is it? I, thought it was... I think that's I thought... what it's saying here. Well, I thought it was next door. It says Chechnya, officially the Chechen Republic, is a republic of Russia situated in Batyk. Uh, okay. Anyway, either way, either way. Yeah, the capital's Grozny. Okay. Yeah, it might be two separate things. Allah alam. Okay, but anyway, in this article, it says he's Dagestani. So, Khabib, he's an MMA fighter. He was in the UFC. And, I, I, well, I don't really follow uh, UFC whatsoever. Do you? Uh, no, but I did watch that fight and I watched, I watched the one I think he had before. Do you know but... about like this stuff? Like when you're watching it, do you know like, oh, he did that and he's doing this and strategy and this and that? Uh, well, I know if they get knocked out, they lose. And if they <laughs> yeah. get pinned to the ground, if they get pinned to the ground and they give up, like they tap out, they lose. So right. I think that's about it. I think those, those are the two, two ways, ways to lose. lose yeah. Or you could lose on like points. So like the judges oh. will, I think for every clean hit you get, you get a point, oh. I think. And then the judges will obviously rally up the points. At a the certain end. point. Is, okay. Interesting. I know that with UFC, like anything goes, right? In terms of uh, you can I think there's you certain can places you can't the, hit. Right. But yeah, you can, so you, can, you, can, tech... you can hit the temple, you can hit the head, like you don't have to. Yeah, I don't think you can hit. Like... Yeah, I don't think you can hit the back of the head. Um, okay. I don't think you can hit the groin. Um... Well, what I've seen with these guys, yeah, I, I don't think I've watched even one minute of a match, but I've seen, I don't know, highlights or I don't know what it was. And I've seen they go, they're brutal with the elbows. The elbows, yeah, killer. The elbow and the knee <laughs> is killer, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so this this brother Khabib, anyway, he's uh, pretty good apparently. Uh, Twenty nine wins and zero losses, right? Um, so he won recently this match, and then he retired. So now everyone's talking about him. Uh, this sister yep. wrote an article about about I guess you could say uh, what the article is called is the Khabib Halal Haram ratio: good character, bad sports, and the conundrum of Muslim representation. So. What this sister is basically saying is that she said Muslims went wild in their praises, showering him with adoration, expressing their admiration of his obedience to his mother, his public demonstrations of sajda to shukr after every match, his humility and his remembrance of Allah and lowering his gaze around inappropriately dressed women, etc. So she's uh, what I liked about this article, bro, is that she was kind of balanced. You know, she was saying that, that all the good things that I just mentioned. She said that first. She started yep. with saying that. And then she was just saying that there has been a near deafening silence on the underlying problematic foundations of the entire phenomenon of Khabib and his popularity amongst Muslim men. So uh, then she mentions obviously the hadith that it's uh, that basically proves that's haram to hit in the face. And obviously right. with the UFC, you, you will hit in the face and you will be hit in the face. I mean, we, I don't think you could win a match without hitting in the face, could you? Right. So it's right. like, you're not going to knock anyone out otherwise. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so the Prophet ﷺ says this is a translation. It's in Al-Bukhari. So, when any one of you fights, let him avoid striking the face. Okay. So, is, is, is that yeah. the context of that hadith? Are you aware of it? Like, when I, no, I haven't I read it. Mm. Okay. It, uh, It'd be interesting to understand the context. Yeah. In Arabic, because it says, if that... 
Yeah. Fell yes. Ah, fell yes. Yeah. So he should avoid the face. Because mm. yeah. I don't know if that's talking about like Muslims fighting against each other, or if that's talking about in general. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It just says. Either qatala ahadukum. If you, if any of you fights. So yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And obviously there is the other hadith, which is the. Um, it's also a uh, kind of principle in fiqh, which is la uh, darara wa la dira. There should be no harming or no reciprocation of harm. So obviously fighting is, is harm, etc. So um, what she says is scholars have agreed that any sports which involves striking the face um, is basically haram. Another thing which is interesting about the UFC and stuff is the, the inappropriate atmosphere. Right, which I hadn't really mm. thought of because I haven't really watched this stuff. Um, but yeah, obviously there's probably alcohol involved, uh, women very badly dressed, um, obviously music and all the, the general stuff that comes with most sports as well. So all in all, you know, not the best place for a Muslim to be. Um, and then and, and obviously what she's yeah. saying is that why are du'at, shiuch, uh, praising him? Why are they praising him? And, you know, it's kind of would cause doubt, surely. Like, this is something haram, like should... Should a da'iyah really be promoting a, a man who's ultimately making his living from something haram, etc.? Um, and and that's that's the crux of this this article, basically saying that uh, why why is he being raised up? Why is he being praised? Whereas obviously <clears throat> part of the article, I suppose, was saying if a woman did something haram and she became uh, good at that, then you know, she's Muslim and all, then, you know, we wouldn't be praising her. We wouldn't be, you know, putting her up there on the pedestal, etc. Mm. So what are your thoughts, Muhammad? Um, I think my, my first thought is really exploring the nuance of that. I'm not saying that it's halal or haram, but it'd be interesting because, mm -hmm. I mean, first and foremost, this is a sport. It's not a necessity. You know, so if we take that, if we look at it as a hypothetical necessity, warfare in general and training and ex like learning how to perform martial arts and stuff, um, I feel like it's a necessity of warfare in any warfare in any sort of physical combat. How how does one engage in that? Um, doing that now, Khabib specifically, I'm not saying that you know this is necessity at all. It's a sport. Um, however, the, the the source of that combat is for self-defense. So it can be applied to warfare. It could be applied to protecting your family from harm, etc. Mm -hmm. The way he fights specifically, he, he's more of a grappler than he is a like, strike you in the face kind of guy. Um, although I'm sure there is strikes and stuff. But yeah. generally speaking, it, he always wins with submission. So he wins by Hold him pinning down, someone to the floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, Why are you defending but, him, bro, from the get-go? No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand the concept of the, the hadith, for example. For oh, example, so like, you're, you're if I was questioning, in a, is it even haram? No, I'm, I'm understanding. Mm. I'm trying to understand the context of that hadith because I'll give you an example. Mm. If I was being attacked, right, the, the one thing I would try and hit is the face, like the yes. head, the face, like because I'm trying to basically survive. So I don't understand what context that hadith is in. Uh, is it in a real fight? Is it in? Is uh, it in a, yeah, yeah. And this yeah. is the context I'm trying to understand that yeah, because, like, yeah, that's, when that's I a said, good point. "Also, is it a when, Muslim? Is it not Muslim?" Exactly. Yeah. It's like so. When when I, when I asked you initially when you read the hadith, I was like, "Is that between two Muslims?" For example, if me and you got in a fight, mm. yeah, then I can understand you're still my brother, but we're having a bit of a you know disagreement here. I wouldn't hit you in the face. Do you know mm. what I mean? But then if it's like some guy's trying to rob me or whatever, or yeah. I'm. A, I'm having a tumble with someone and all I can really get to is their face mm. or I know that that's going to you know, stop them. It's it's like, okay, do I have to consciously think of that hadith now and not mm. hit their face despite the fact? So this is where I'm like trying to figure it out. And mm. also like in war, bro, I'm sure in war and in battles, you know, you got a sword or whatever back in that day or... Bro, even you know, th <laughs> bro, these if days, a sword is going through someone's body, then you can probably I know. punch them in the face. No, but like you've got you've got armor, you've yeah. got shields. Do you yeah. get me? Like sometimes the only thing that's visible is the face because that's where the shield isn't. Yeah. Uh, likewise with shoot shooting guns, bro. Like the face is that area where yes, it is a sacred area, but it's also headshot, bro. Headshot. No <laughs> headshot. So. Context okay. is key. Well, the game think... messed us up, in it? I know, bro. <laughs> I, was of a, I was thinking of a game I was playing earlier, as I was saying that. But um, no, for real, like, 
I think that's why this this hadith actually needs to be studied and not just used yeah. as a trump card for people. Yeah. Um, in this argument, it needs yeah. to be looked at completely separately, away from any sort of um, context of modern day, and looked at what it was back then. What yeah. did the prophet? What was the prophet was them talking about? Yeah. Anyway, either way, either mm. way, this maybe is maybe we should assume it's... that it is haram. Yeah. Like, let's just assume. Yeah, yeah. Let's just assume it is because. In the same, I would still agree that it's impermissible because it's a sport here, not a necessity. Yeah. Like, it may be a necessity to train. It may be a necessity to get everywhere up until that competition where they're playing for, I don't know, whatever. Like, me and you sparring, do you know what I mean, might be uh, necessary. But at the same time, people have argued, like, I know Firas Zehabi, I think he was on Muhammad... Um, Hijab's podcast and he made a comment about it yeah. saying like you will not be able to test your skills unless you're in a real fight but how many real fights are you ever going to get into unless you go and start a fight with somebody you're not gonna and how do you learn and how do you adapt and how do you become a better fighter like how do you get in that sort of in that field and teach others really to protect themselves mm -hmm. if you've never been in a real fight because you've always been practicing with your friends or practicing yeah. this and that um so there's that element of it um, but okay, let's let's go with the, the the let's go with the notion that it's haram. I'm not saying that I'm dissing what ulama have said about it. Yeah. I just really want to understand the source. I want to know yeah. deeply why, because all I've heard is yes, this is wrong. Yeah. Okay. Why? Well, like, give me the give me the context of that hadith. Give me the tafsir of it, etc. Mm. Anyway. Oh God, my son is screaming his head off. Can you hear that? Yeah, a little bit. Hey, bro, a bit of a fighter. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, let's assume it is. Why are we? Why are Muslims praising him? Well, I'd argue it's because he's in an arena that yeah, fair enough. It's not an arena that Muslims have ever or should really put themselves in. However, he is still very, very strongly vocal about Islam. It's not like he is. He doesn't pull his punches when it comes to the Dean, right? Now a lot of women, a lot of men. A lot of like YouTubers, a lot of uh, anyone who makes it successful in in any other field that it might arguably be Muslim, which is what the article is referring to. Like, oh, if a woman did this or whatever, or if a man, someone else did this in a different field, they're not very vocally or powerfully Muslim about what they're doing, right? So they're not like saying things that you know galvanizes Muslims everywhere. For example, one clip of his is like he was saying Alhamdulillah really loud then. He goes, I know you guys don't like this, but you know what I mean? That's quite empowering yeah. to a lot of Muslims to hear, right? Yeah. And it's also like articulating some sort of win that Muslims and Islam has over other things or other communities or other people that we don't really have these day, this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, people just get caught up in that. And you've got to remember, you've got to remember like a lot of Muslims aren't practicing that here. A lot of Muslims don't they're not engaged and involved in the deen like we are. They identify as Muslims. I'm not saying we, as in me and you are, but, you know, generally speaking, we we keep tabs on what's going on in the Ummah. We keep tabs on, on the Dawah scene. We keep tabs on what Islam's... A lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. um, so when they see that, they identify with that and they'll praise that and they'll think, oh, he's a, like a, he's like a stoic sort of figure. He's a religious man and he's a winner. Do you know what I mean? Like he's... You don't see that too often, you yeah. know? And, and if there was a Christian guy, bro who's like very deeply, you know, religious and he was winning on that level, he would also be attributing his wins to God and he'd be also be like galvanizing other Christians around him that are quite into their religion in that sense. Mm -hmm. It's it's rare in this day and age that you see somebody so religious and also, you know, dominating in their field, outwardly religious about it and dominating in their field. I, don't, I can't think of one now that comes to my head. There probably is very obvious ones, but I can't think mm. of somebody in this day and age that is like the top of their field, whatever it is, yeah. but then very vocally religious. Yeah. Not just Islamic, but any religion. Like this is, I attribute my success to my, my religion. Mm. I attribute, you know. The actual other person I can think of right now, and I wouldn't say success because he already kind of got there before he became religious, was like Kanye West, for example. He's very like vocal about Christianity now and, and yeah. God and stuff. But even that is quite like I shared a clip of Kanye West to a few weeks ago on my Twitter, <gasps> a little video clip mm. because of not because of what he does. I don't promote what he does. I'm not, you know, I don't praise music or the lifestyle, whatever, but just because of what he said, there was truth in it. And that's what I was sort of, then yeah. the truth is the property of the believer. Anyway. Uh, one of the things he was talking about was how schools basically, I think it was like schools got rid of the fear of God. 
So when when the fear of God um, is taken away from people, then people become scared of everything else. They'll be scared of like the government or scared of this, scared of that. But he said he sends he said if you're scared, if you only fear God, then you, you, won't fit, fear you don't. Anything. You won't fear anything else, and mm. that was basically what he was saying. Yeah. Um, and fair enough, I shared that, and I and I I liked that, and I like what he said there because it it's, it spoke true in my eyes. Yeah. But then also. Does that mean now I'm promoting the the music and the no that's not what it is. Yeah. And I think similarly with Khabib, bro, I think we promote we're, we're celebrating what he's saying. We're celebrating where he's coming from and his yeah. his message because mm-hmm. he's on a platform where he can now give that dawah. And yeah. at the end of the day, let's say he's he let's say he's retired, which is what he said he's doing. Well then what's left? Okay, he's retired now, but now he's just Muslim. Do you get me? And he's saying things and he's still making statements and stuff. And maybe he's made Toba for that. And maybe part of the reason he retired is because his mum, because I know he mentioned his mum said, please stop or whatever. Mm. That could be part of it. That could be part of it. Do you know what I mean? That it could yeah. be a part of his reason for stopping was that it was impermissible and he wanted to stop and, 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 and end it there. Yeah. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, I think the, the main point, which is something you mentioned, is that the reason people like him, the pe- mm-hmm. reason people are mentioning him in a positive way is specifically because he's giving Izzah to the Muslims, mm-hmm. because he's using the language of Islam, because yani, if any, you know, ask any random guy about him, if they, if they say two sentences about the guy, they will definitely include the word Islam in that, mm-hmm. wouldn't they, mm-hmm. when describing mm-hmm. him. And so... This, I feel like it's not comparable to uh, uh, another, uh, like any, any, any Muslim woman who is out there um, v- very good at whatever she's doing. Uh, mm. Because if you look at that, you know, maybe I, I don't know better examples, right? But if we look at the biggest uh, Muslim YouTubers, they are not known for their religiosity per se. When they're making their videos, they're not necessarily speaking. Uh, uh, their content is not Islamic. Their mm. akhlaq, you could say, is not even Islam. Like, what is Islamic about what they're doing other than the fact that they are Muslim? They are Muslim and uh, maybe they're wearing a scarf, right? That That's kind of where it seems to stop with them. Whereas with him, yes, he is doing something haram, let's say, the sport, but everything about the way he carries himself is linked to Islam, isn't it? Mm, and mm. so, like you said, he's being raised up because of his Islam. Mm. And maybe if, if the women were doing something very Islamic, then they would be raised up as well. So I think we could say that that's a fair point, Yanni, that he's being raised up because of the Islamic element, not because he's Muslim and he's sick yeah. at fighting. Because he's like, we could talk about Muhammad Salah, for example. He's also Muslim. Mm. He's also top of his game, but he doesn't have the same Islamic element as Khabib, does he? And no. that's why people love Khabib more. That's why people mm. praise. Do, do you find like Shuyukh and Duat praising Muhammad Salah that much? Like, not really, right? No, I think um, because in, in 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 Khabib's own way, he mm. considers himself a bit of a da'i as well. Like some of his posts are clear cut, bro. Like mm. when you know, clear cut da'wah. Like mm. no, no, he doesn't hide from that. Yeah. whatsoever and yeah. and there's this article i haven't read it obviously i'm just going based on what you're saying but it seems a bit yeah. hypothetical because there is no example of an alternative for example it says if a woman did this yeah if you know what bro, this, i'm trying to remember honest. if i remember there was a vibe of that uh like the whole thing of those double standards but i've got to be honest that wasn't like the main um point of the article it was just a sub point just it'd be, be interesting fair, though you know? yeah it'd be in, it'd be interesting though because like i'm trying to think of a woman in that field or any man a man in that field who is as vocal and is doing something other than mma right and i'm trying to think and even and i'm mm. struggling I'm trying to give it like a hypothetical example but to be honest yeah any muslim who is relatively successful mm. there is elements of support they'll get support from certain groups of muslims no matter yeah. what they're doing yeah that's regardless you know the muslim the du'at, though that's i think well, the, the, the crux here yeah the du'at are as far as i've seen and I haven't seen that many, but as far mm. as I've seen, they have very clearly put disclaimers about MMA as a sport, but then also mm. praised Khabib as an individual. Yeah, him, you know, let's let's be honest. Yeah, MMA doesn't take him out of the fold of Islam. You yeah, know? 
Number two, number two he, there's probably a difference of opinion on it, I'll be honest with you, because wrestling <laughs> is something that is... Rest, wrestling is some... No, I'm not saying difference in terms of... Um, I'm saying in terms of Khabib as an individual, he's probably been... He's either been approached about it or he hasn't. Do you understand? And he's in his mind, he probably doesn't think that there's anything wrong. Or he does, and he's... Do you understand? We don't know until he speaks about it himself. But there's also this element of, okay, there's evidence that combat exists before there's evidence that even wrestling existed in the time of the prophet so there's this cognitive dissonance in between where at what point does it become haram do you understand does it become haram the moment that khabib hits somebody in the face but what if he doesn't hit somebody in the face what if in all those fights he hasn't hit anybody in the face and he's just grappled them submission yeah. to what he's done but if he hits somebody in the face once does that make the entire thing haram or is it just that moment he did something haram do you understand what i'm trying yeah, to say you're right but also, because, also you could, yeah, and it's not the place for a Muslim to be, to be honest. No, though, isn't it? there is that element of it. But actually, mm. with the lockdown and stuff, there hasn't even been any crowds, bro. It's just been fighters, bro. <laughs> like the last fight he did, there wasn't even an audience. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? But you can't really control that. It's kind of, it reminds me a bit of like what Mufti was saying about the barbershop analogy. I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen that yes. clip. Yeah, yeah. Where he course. speaks about like to achieve a certain um, level or sort of qualification you have to go through some elements of haram to, to yeah. then be on top to do your own thing yeah you know? and i'm sure those elements don't exist in khabib's home like in terms of his home um arenas and his home gyms and, and where he where he can control the environment those elements yeah. don't exist you know? yeah um i'm not uh, like i said at the end of the day i'm not denying that it might be haram once again i need i haven't seen that i haven't yeah. seen it myself mm. i can understand it i just find it difficult at this stage based on the little knowledge i have that in a sport where you can choose how you attack you choose what technique you use mm. that because hitting in the face is haram suddenly yeah. the whole sport is wrong when actually you can go through yeah. the whole thing without hitting anybody mm. in the face yeah yeah there is the element though of uh harm you know, you shouldn't be in a situation where you're going to be harmed and you're going to harm. And and he, are, you are definitely going to do that in, in UFC. Yeah, there's that element. Yeah, I suppose there is that element. Yeah, well. I, don't, I don't think, yeah, I, mean, I think it makes it simpler discussion if we say, look, yeah, let's say it's haram, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that makes it simpler because then we can actually do this comparison um, uh, in terms of like uh, a Muslim man is is involved in a sport which contains haram elements. Um, and he is he is known for his Islamic kind of vibe, his Islamic aura, right? Yep. And he's being raised up and always he's mentioned when people raise him up, they mention those things. They don't necessarily mention he's good at fighting or that too much, right? So the focus yeah. is on the Islamic side. So that that's what we're comparing now with, you know, like a Muslim woman doing that. Like, I mean, I, I can't even think of examples um, but. The important thing here this is is, is a definition yeah. of a double standard. A double standard is when you take two same things and then you have different standards for each one. But I don't think there is obviously, one. Exactly. We, we wouldn't say, as Muslims, we know that you in, in uh, a few areas, quite a few areas, you don't have the same standards for men and women, right? Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. uh, it, we can't go into this kind of conversation assuming that it's it's the same that they're, they're equal things and we're giving them different standards because mm. for example would you say like uh, let's say a muslim woman was very good at uh, i don't know horse riding for example yeah you know? yeah yeah um that for her to do that in a permissible manner she would have to be do do that behind closed doors kind of thing yeah. so we wouldn't necessarily know about her she wouldn't necessarily be all out there she wouldn't be world famous um and that's that is what's required to to like be a Muslim woman, like pleasing Allah in that sense. So, uh, in, in, if we talk about double standards, yeah, and he, the, in certain areas of life, you can say there's double standard between men and women, right? For example, mm -hmm. I don't know. Help me out here. What could be a double standard? Like uh, potentially, um, no, that's uh, no, not the best example. Um, I don't know. Giving your uh, giving you, let's say I give my daughter uh, 50 pounds a month and I give my mm. son 100 pounds a month. Yep. You could say maybe that's double standard, right? Because they're both my kids. They both don't have responsibilities. They're young kids. 
and I'm choosing to give my son different to my daughter. Okay, double standards. Because you got a different standard for the same equal thing. But like I'm saying, in, in something like uh, public sports, being a public figure, we don't actually yep. have the same standard for men and women, do we? No. I think it's difficult, Okay, I think if you put put Khabib as a silent protagonist instead, bro, and then you've got nothing, no one would be talking about him. If he was just a Muslim person who won all of these matches but didn't really speak much about his deen, then, yeah, some Muslims, yeah. A, a, a small minority of Muslims would celebrate the fact that he's Muslim, but no one would care. Yeah, like, maybe, no, like, maybe no, like Muhammad Salah kind of situation. Yeah, yeah Muhammad Salah, I think, well, what, he was galvanised a bit because I don't know much about him. But as far as when I first came onto the scene... There were like pictures of him with Quran. There was stuff. You know, he, he made some statements. I don't know about now, mm. but, you know, at least when I first heard of him, that's why some people were excited. Mm. But there's been Muslim footballers for the flipping forever. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? So whether he was being promoted more than others, I don't know. I really don't know because I'm not really too familiar with that scene. Yeah, yeah. But like a good comparison is like Muhammad Ali, bro. Like Muhammad Ali was the greatest in the world, essentially boxing, right? But mm. some people talk about his boxing. But it's actually the statements and the little clips that he, you know, the clips of wisdom and the dawah that he gave and stuff that people mm. really latched onto. And that's why people, like Muslims especially, celebrate that. But yeah, boxing is still haram. Do you understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? If, you yeah. know, under that sort of same understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, bro, like, initially, bro, any Muslim that says a statement of haq on a platform that is reached by millions, then yeah. we should celebrate that. Because it's the actual challenges of being on that platform and having to battle against the fit, the fit end that come along with that, mm, mm. but still making a statement that out, outwardly pushes away, you know, the nonsense away from you because yeah. Khabib saying that sort of stuff yeah. pushes a lot of nonsense away from him. You know, yes. it pushes a lot of fit end away from him, a lot of temptation away from yeah, him yeah. because the moment you say that, then a lot of people mm. know that you're not going to mess mm. with certain mm. things. Yeah. A lot of things, get away from you and, and spell away from you and further to that i just remembered a lot of the time where he got a lot of um uh attention was when he was fighting mcgregor mm. and that kind of became a muslim versus uh yeah. whatever you want to call it crusader yeah. kind of situation didn't it yeah. because yeah. mcgregor was saying things anti-islamic things correct or he I was insulting so, yeah. his parents and this and that so that also to to combat somebody like that you know an a arrogant person like mcgregor again the islamic element is very strong there yeah right so that's what that's why okay. and i just remembered bro <laughs> this there's this clip i find it every few years it comes up some boxer uh, i think he's yemeni and he's like walking in the ring with like this music and he's like so arrogant do you yeah. know what i'm talking about i think it's uh i don't know who it is, is it I think it's Prince Naim. I oh, think. Prince Nassim. Is that it? Nassim. Something like that. But I, I don't know if Pakistan it was him or like a, a guy who's not that good. Because I think he got knocked out like round one. Oh, I don't maybe know. I'm thinking of Anyway, else. yeah, yeah. Something like that. Anyway, that guy did not get pushed by the Da'at, did he? Right? Uh -huh. He's coming out, arrogant, music, this and that. So yeah. I think this is the important thing here is that people are really right, raising him up because of the Islamic element. And that's the difference. And... You know, I think, you know, if we're going to talk about the double standard thing, I think, you know, if some kind of prominent woman, Muslim woman, you know, was saying something like that and like galvanizing Muslims, like you said, like, I think many people would actually share that, to be honest. I mean, bro, like, uh, I'll give you an example. Yeah, I was watching a documentary uh, two nights ago mm. about... Um, this archaeological discovery they made in Egypt, right? The whole the whole team. It was it's called well, it's called the Secrets of Saqqara, and it's on Netflix. But it's I just found it phenomenal. I love that stuff, bro. I, I absolutely love that stuff. However, when I put it on, I was expecting to see like you know some Americans, some British people, all these science like you know these Western scientists coming over and bro entire team were egyptian archaeologists bro like everybody from the workers from everyone the whole show was in arabic but obviously english subtitles mm. with some some of the speakers some of the egyptians spoke english but generally speaking it was predominantly in arabic with subtitles and i and the discoveries they made were incredible like groundbreaking discoveries and i just thought i was sitting there just like absolutely like super excited bro for them because you know, one clip it showed one of the Muslims, like one of the one of the brothers, the archaeologist, archaeologist praying in the masjid. Uh, you know, the certain things they're saying, going in by the same bismillah, all these other things. 
And I saw them winning, bro. Like they were winning through this documentary. They were making amazing discoveries. They were leading in their field, bro. And I was super excited. And I remember this woman comes on, a uh, doctor, I forgot her name, Amira something. Um, but she was, she, she was responsible of basically looking at certain skeletons and then essentially like trying to understand how they died, what sort of conditions they may have had, what illnesses they have, and understanding more about the skeleton structure and what it meant. Like, is it a boy? Is it a girl? How old were they? That kind of thing. And, you know, she was, she had a hijab on, bro. She was, you know, very modest in her approach, in her speaking and stuff like that. And my, my wife was watching with me and she was so excited and in love with this woman because, because to us, it was like, this is a Muslim that is like top of their field and what they're doing on like a major sort of, Platform. like a Netflix is huge bro and it was like a feature documentary on Netflix as well it wasn't like something lost in the mm. it was like a main sort of thing that was being advertised and I even looked her up on IMDB or whatever to see if she was she had any sort of like papers or journals or anything else around. very unknown like that was the only thing that they're known for but once again we were sitting there me and my wife like absolutely celebrating their achievement and like I don't know I don't know actually about the permissibility of doing stuff like that in terms of like digging up mummies and coffins and stuff like that. Is that something that should be left? Or is that something that there probably is an argument for either or really, isn't there? Mm -hmm. um, probably more for not doing it than there is for doing it. Like I can't think of any sort of benefit, you know, in terms of Dini and any benefit for digging stuff up like that, especially bodies and stuff. But at the same time, I was just, I was just amazed actually that, of Muslims around the world that are achieving things. And I think any Muslim that is achieving something and is vocally Muslim about it, then we should celebrate the fact that they're Muslim and they haven't sold themselves out. That's the main thing, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, ultimately doing something, you know, generally within, in line with Islam and being open about their Islam and uh, all of that and having the characteristics of a Muslim and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's like if you, if you're a good Muslim, you have you know the the right character, and then, but you're a fighter and you hit people in the face. Like, it's obviously one element of who you are, isn't it? Um, it's a statement, bro. It's yeah. statements. Like once again, like Dave Chappelle came out the other day. He did an interview with someone, and they asked him about Islam. Like, oh, yeah. you say you're Muslim. Like, how did that happen? And he says some, he says some positive things about Islam, and people were sharing that all over mm. because it's not about him. It's about what he said. It's about the truth yeah. that applies. <laughs> Dave Chappelle, not the most. Uh... Yeah. Moral I'm not, yeah. <laughs> but if a day said if a day shares that, they're not promoting the thing. Yes. They're promoting the statement, you know. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, it'll be the same for a woman. I, I'm trying to think of an example of a woman in that position. Mm. I'm sure there are many out there, but I don't expose myself to to you know to you know I don't follow any Muslim women celebrities or anything like that. I don't really know, but I'm sure that that stuff's existed. The reason why I gave that example of uh, the archaeologist is because. That was the most recent yeah, just came Muslim across. woman. Yeah, Muslim woman in her field. I was like, wow, yeah. that's really amazing. Yeah. That's phenomenal, you know? Yeah. One thing which kind of shocked me a bit in this article was that this sister was saying, let me find the exact quote. She was saying that his, oh yeah, if I just search that word. Uh, yes, she said... The truth of the matter is that his presence at these events was a necessary part of his career. His income derived from this haram sport and this haram environment can bluntly be considered haram rizq and no different in legal ruling than those who make money from liquor stores or running brothels. I thought that was a bit, <laughs> that was a bit harsh, surely. Yeah. Um, because hitting in the face is not a major sin, like selling alcohol, running a brothel, etc. you know? Um, but maybe she's talking about the involvement of haram stuff in the venue, you know, like sponsorships from alcohol companies. Or but something. he'd only get sponsored for what he, like, so I was on his Instagram recently and he was like sponsored by, I think it was like an energy drink or something like that. I could be completely wrong. Um, yeah. What, what, but then surely you know, like these these uh, fighters, you know, when they get paid, like they get paid a lot, right, per fight. Yeah, I assume that they get paid by the sponsorships that they own, like they're part of. Oh, that they're personally sponsored. Part of, yeah. Oh, so they have an like, agent, and it works like that. Yeah, uh, that's so why the actual so... the actual UFC entity doesn't pay them anything. I haven't got a clue. I haven't got mm. a clue. 
But then even if it did, it's like what percentage of that is coming from where? And then you have to do the maths. Um, yeah. Find out how much to give away. <laughs> yeah. It's not always clear cut. Just because there's one element of haram in something doesn't yeah. mean the entire thing is haram. Yeah. Um, and that's a I mean, that's yeah. issue that needs to be studied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought, anyway, I thought that bit was a bit, seemed a bit off, a bit harsh, a bit extreme. I don't know. Who knows? Allah alam. But um, yeah, all in all, I think, I think yeah, after discussing this, I think it's quite obvious, to be honest, that what du'at and what Muslims generally share is just that raw love for Islam, love for Allah, mm. love for the Prophet ﷺ, being proud of it. And that's what the type of stuff they're sharing. They're actually probably mm. not thinking too deep about, oh, this is haram and this and that. Um, you know, so so it's quite i think it's quite obvious and quite natural that that this guy's shared to be honest so you've got another thing i wanted to, to mention actually i forgot to say is that you've got a, i'm sure you'll probably come across this when you're writing your book or if you finished it is how thirsty muslims are for stuff like this especially muslim men they are thirsty for like modern day role models mm. they're not only vocal about islam but also like you know they've got a backbone They've got a backbone, they're leaders in their sort of field, you know, and even even the element of, of you know, I wouldn't say violence, but like controlled sort of um, physicality. You don't yeah. see that too much these yeah, days. Yeah, like, yeah. why why are why are Mus young Muslims like or Muslims in general like fascinated by Khalid ibn Walid or or and I'm not saying that Habib's Khalid ibn Walid, <laughs> but I'm saying there's an element of you know uh, a warrior spirit in there that we don't have that much. We've been muted a lot. Um, you know, yeah. Muslims around the world have been silenced and anyone yeah. with a backbone and anyone with some sort of physical proudness mm. and is vocally Muslim, they're going to be celebrated. You can't help that, mm. you know? Mm. And, and that speaks yeah. to me because I think about like, you know, you think about the inevitable, you know, arrival of the Mahdi, for example, like this is a sort of, sort of vibe that you're going to get. You're going to get Muslims just absolutely galvanized all over the world because they're just like, you know, amazed at the, the might of this individual and the, 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 the the power that they could command out of people, you know, um, yeah. and you get that way, bro. You read up on history, and you you just there's characters and there's harbors and there's generals and there's warriors. Like look at Salah Hadid, for example, another example like of, of Muslims sort of celebrating an individual. Now people people argue on a deeper level. They'll argue, oh, uh, Salah Hadid may have had these kind of beliefs, or this this person that you celebrated might have had this kind of beliefs. It was the same with that Ertuğrul show that was on, um, you know, the Turkish show. Yeah, uh, there were things wrong with that show, but people were celebrating it. Why were they celebrating it? There were mm. definitely things wrong with that show, but people were celebrating it because of the certain elements of Islam being promoted, Islam being put as a yes. priority. You know, um, and it's the same sort of thing, bro. Definitely yes. same yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, man. You know, I was. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, it's maybe a year ago. I think it was the American Psychology Association. Um, they kind of did, I can't remember, it's like a meta-analysis or something. And they came out basically with these traits of toxic masculinity, like what is toxic masculinity? And uh, yani basically undesirable traits that are associated with men, right? And some of these traits that they mentioned are things that absolutely uh, don't need to be toxic, right? So for example, mm -hmm. aggression uh, or seeking to dominate uh, these things do not need to be labeled as uh, purely negative. They're things yeah. that the thing is, if we if we label these things as negative, it means we're actually we are labeling an innate part of a normal man to be negative. Uh, but what what we need to do, and what Allah does, and how Allah channels us uh, with through Islam, is channeling these natural uh, traits into good use. You know, to be put mm. to benefit. And, you know, you got to think of it, bro, like a few hundred years ago, the man who had no other benefit in life, not, nothing else he could contribute to the world other than going and fighting for the sake of Allah. What yeah. is that man doing today? You know, is he addicted mm -hmm. to video games in his mom's basement? You yeah. know, uh, you got you got to think of this kind of question. Some people... They, 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 they have a certain thing they can give the world. And sometimes the world is not in a situation where they can go out and offer that. Yeah. And it, maybe it was the opposite. You know, there were people who might have been so strong up here, but they needed to go and fight because that was just what was needed at the time. And so they yeah. didn't fulfill their potential. So 
yeah, you gotta you gotta think of those kind of people, man. Like, there's a time for different things. Different things are beneficial at different times. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that these natural things we can't dismiss them. We have to channel them in the right direction. And what you're saying is that's that is a, definitely a reason people love Habib. It's there is an element of liking because it's fighting specifically. You know, yeah, yeah it is different definitely. to if it was golf, bro. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> because because true. we're craving. Uh, it's 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 the also the fact that with uh, MMA, it's like it, 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 when you're unapologetically Muslim and you're actually dominating in a fight, you're dominating, right? You're physically dominating someone. Um, people people feel like Islam is being dominated all day, mm. and then this guy who's kind of got a bit of a symbol of Islam on him, he's actually dominated. It's like Oh yes, this is what I'm kind of looking for. It's like we we have to be uh, constantly be the super peaceful one, and this is yeah. like one tiny slither of life where it's like okay, apparently you know for now, <laughs> for a Muslim, yeah. openly Muslim guy to actually do that. So yeah. it makes sense, you know. We, the world does not change, Yanni, just because uh, you know a lot of these uh, little wars between tribes and and empires and stuff just because that's kind of maybe slowed down or it seems to have slowed down it doesn't mean people don't have certain natural things within them yanni oh, of so course we gotta and understand these things, that these things have existed since the dawn of time you know combat isn't mm. something you know combat is something that's existed since the dawn of time and yeah yeah it's always going to be in, in, in some way part of our dna i mean it's legislate there's legislations for it in the quran about combat about jihad about warfare you know, this is something you can't get away from as a human being. You can't erase it. It's part of our nature. Yeah. Um, and Allah so puts things is. in place for the scenarios which we might not prefer, but they are going to be a part of life, right? Mm -hmm. um, like warfare, like you said, like um, dealing with the poor, you know. Like, I remember Sheikh Haytham, he was saying that when we talk about Islamic finance or Islamic economics, he's like, you can't separate zakah and sadaqah from Islamic economics. You know, mm. it's part of the it's part of the parcel. You know, if yeah. you implement everything except the fact that Muslims should be generous, yeah. If you get rid of that, the system won't no. work. It's yeah. all it's all one. You know, and uh, that's what, Allah created a Sharia that was uh, designed to work with poor people, having poor people. So poor people will always exist, even though yeah. you know, we wouldn't like that. But mm. you know, and the the dunya is not perfect, so. No, no doubt. It's designed and neither for are people, bro. Dunya. Yeah. Neither are people. And, you know, we need to, yeah. part of us need to get over that. I mean, I don't know what the alternative is. Like, what do you want us to do? Like, if someone is vocally, this is another thing. Like, let's say he was like that. You know, he is how he is, as he is today, Khabib specifically. And then nobody, nobody paid attention. Like, it's impossible. How can any, how can people not pay attention to what he's saying? Muslims, mm -hmm. how can Muslims just disregard that? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, he says those things. Ah, oh, well, I don't really care because he's, uh, do you understand what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not, it's going think, against anything that's human nature to, to try yeah, and dismiss yeah. him. I think the argument here for me would, the stronger argument would not be why are Muslims like praising him and sharing him? It wouldn't be that at all. It would be why are Du'at doing it? That would be my, uh, you know, the stronger kind of thing to say. But there's another thing, bro, like this idea of why are du'a doing it, once mm -hmm. again, it puts du'a in a position where they're meant to be something other than human beings themselves, which is another issue I've got. It's like when you have du'a, oh, there's a big scandal that happened or some day I got exposed, but like you got exposed like every single day of your life, but you haven't got an audience and nobody cares. Like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, yes, we get that there's a responsibility that people put themselves in a religious you know, yeah. uh, in, in, a, in a, you know, in a religious environment and then should always uphold that religiosity. But actually, publicly, we should least. all, mm. yeah, at least publicly, but actually we're all public Muslims. We all pray in congregation. Do you understand? We all yeah. are those people. We all should be given dawah. We should, the only difference is that there's a camera on somebody's face. But before the, there was cameras, what else was there? There was people giving dawah day, day in, day out. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like there wasn't a job of a day. There was people just do it. Everybody was a, gave their certain. Yeah, sort of if, if you're somebody work. though with with knowledge, and someone who's a teacher, I think maybe teacher is a better word. Someone who's actually a teacher, they've gained Islamic knowledge and now they're teaching it to people. And they're in I that position of authority. I then still hate. We that have word. a certain stand. We do have a different standard for them, and we should have a different standard for them.
But once again, I'm always, I always think like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that everybody is a sinner. So the moment you found out about that particular person's sin, that mm. particular scholar, whatever, um, immediately people would be wanting to expose them and dismiss them and not give them the right, the life day. Yeah. But what sin could they possibly do? What sin could a scholar possibly do that you would find out about and think, oh, that's fine. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to keep listening to them. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, if it could be anything, Echi, like what, are, what, are, what sin is acceptable to someone? No sin is acceptable to anybody. I can't think of a sin that is clear cut in Islam, right? Mm. That we would just say, oh, no, but that's fine. Like, generally speaking, no. So the moment you find a scholar doing it, it's mm. like, oh, it's even worse because he's done it. But he's also just as human. And he has definitely committed sins because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms that every, every, every son of Adam is a sinner. So what, what I'm trying to say is like, it's a bit of a catch-22 double. The big double standard in this is like, you've got people that are vocally saying, we are too harsh, we're too judgmental, we're too this and that. But in the moment that there's somebody who's actually doing some khair, yeah, and they're making mistakes. No, no, no. Why are you celebrating that? You need to be putting him down because of the sin that he's making. But that's the opposite mm. of the narrative that people complain about. The narrative that people complain about is that we're too harsh on each other. The moment that somebody does some khair, we try and find something to tear them down with. And then you just can't win, Nahi. There's that's no winning. True. Yeah. There's, that's, that's double standard. That is a double standard. <laughs> the double standard is that, oh, you know, we're too hard. Like, I don't know who wrote this article. And I'd, I'd, it'd be interesting to see what their perspective would be on another example of like, I don't know, uh, um, you know, like I said, uh, like Dave you gave Chappelle. an example of a mm. Dave Chappelle or, or even an example of like a, the people that get the most hate, yeah, are like Muslim YouTubers. Right. They get a lot of criticism. They get a lot yeah. of hate. But then the moment they do some khair, there are people that do, do exist that say, oh, I don't care what they say. They shouldn't be doing this. They shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't be doing these videos. Shouldn't be doing... But, but where do you win? We should be supporting people in khair and in what they do in this khair. Yeah. Yeah, if they're doing the bad, then don't you know, well, guide them. Mm. Don't promote that. Give them advice on that. You know, I'm trying to think of a Muslim. So how, where do you draw the line? Because, uh, so you could have a, a da'ya, yeah, he's, he's posting Khabib stuff, yeah? And you're mm -hmm. saying, you know, that's fine. He's spreading good stuff, right? He doesn't have to tear him down because he's doing something haram in every post, right? But then what if he's like, he's feeling a certain Kanye track one day and he shares it on his social media? <laughs> but then he's, that, but then he's promoting the sin itself. Ah, you know? okay, yeah. You understand? Okay. It's, he's not promoting what the person said. For oh. example, I don't think a day has put up, um, I could be wrong, but I don't think a day has put up a clip of Khabib, you know, punching the living daylights out of someone and saying, oh, this is amazing. They've I put love up how a clip. He specifically hit him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> what, the, what the day may be doing, which is yeah. more likely, is talking yeah. about what Khabib said in this specific thing, yeah. or how Khabib did this, or yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when yeah. this was said to him, he, returned, yeah. he responded yeah. with this. That's yeah. what they're focusing on. Yes, you're right. No? Yeah. That's I don't I don't think any day, and I don't know, I really don't know, but I wouldn't think any day is talking about, you know, going up on the pulpit on the mimbar and talking about Khabib's left hook. You know what I mean? Like that's not <laughs> what's going on at all. That's not what's going on at all. Um <laughs> No, it's just talking about Muslims. We're talking about Muslims in general. Yeah. You know, and, and, and if I'll be honest, I'm trying to visualize a hypothetical scenario. If a Muslim or like a Muslim YouTuber or a Muslim model or whatever, right? Let's say she didn't wear hijab or didn't do anything. Very famous. She was on all these magazines and stuff. One day she gets interviewed by, I don't know, the BBC or whatever. And in that interview, she says something very powerful about Islam. Yeah. Right? Very true. Very like, oh, she's got a backbone for saying that sort of thing. That yeah. would be celebrated by everyone. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I don't think it matters to anybody that in that specific moment, they're not dressed like this. Or yeah, not. yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, it's yeah. a statement of how about it. I, I agree with you. And I think, you know, uh, what's his name? Zishan, uh, Smile to Jannah. He talks about these kind of things sometimes, right? He'll be talking about oh, yeah. a Muslim rapper or a um, Muslim uh, model. And they yeah. say something about, you know, oh, my life's empty without Islam. I wish I was this or that. He, d he does highlight it, actually. Yeah. And that, that's kind of his focus, uh, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. So you're right, bro. You're right, I think. Yeah. It's, and I think for, for him, he uses that as a stepping stone for a lot of people that aren't practicing whatsoever to then realize. I think realize, he's pretty genius, mashallah. Bro, 
what he's what he's highlighting is that there's a lot of let's say a non-muslim not non-muslim uh actually even a non-muslim audience could could you know appeal to that but you know got a muslim audience that maybe isn't really practicing but they look up to these people and then these people say something powerful about islam that makes them realize oh i should be thinking about my religion too because they yeah. clearly still it's still playing in their mind despite yeah. the fact that they're rapping about this and singing about this mm. and dressing like that yeah you know it, it, it's highlighting that despite all of that mm. there's still something there yeah that they're very mm. you know mm. strongly mm. attached to yeah yeah i just remember <laughs> this came to mind there was this um interview with the uh, french montana yeah he's a uh, moroccan right oh yeah 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 so he's in morocco yeah he's getting interviewed so this lady's talking to him in french french or english one of the two and her uh, english or french whatever wasn't that good and he's just there like listening and she's talking 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 she's struggling yani yeah and then she asks him a question and then he replies in arabic yeah. And then the whole time he made her like struggle with that. And he's like, what, you think I did Arabic? And then he's talking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah That's man. another example. Like, I I don't know who, I don't know how this is known. My wife knows somebody that's related to him, something along those lines, mm. French Montana. Like she was, she was telling me how, basically she was talking, I can't remember the specifics, but she was talking to me about some khair that he does, especially in Ramadan and some good mm. stuff that he, he gets up to. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's amazing. I really like mm. that. Do you know why? Because the environment he's in is insane. You know, the environment he's in is like fitna on a, another level. But does that mean that I'm going to take him out of the fold of Islam and dismiss any khair that he may or may not do? No, I hope that the khair increases. I hope that khair that he does leads to more khair. You know, and that's the way yeah. we should be. Mm. You know, unless, unless the individual is sitting in front of me, and I can give them some dower, then I'm not going to just go on the internet, start talking bad mouthing them about the the obvious haram that they're up to. Yeah. Unless it's the obvious haram that you're promoting. Mm -hmm. If somebody's promoting the music, and I'm like, ah, oh, you shouldn't be listening to this. You shouldn't be, you know, pro look at he's singing about some really bad stuff. Like, but then if he comes up and says something positive about Islam, and somebody shares that, I'm like, yeah, that's 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 true. What he said there is really true, and that's powerful. Mm. That's it. The question: Why are people supporting Khabib is just I don't know they say there aren't many stupid questions but if it's a, if it's not rhetorical <laughs> then it's a stupid question to me <laughs> it's obvious why they're supporting him right it mm. shouldn't be like why are people supporting him he can't you see that he does all this haram why are mm. people supporting him yeah but can't you see why he's all the khair that he's doing and anyway Allah Alam Allah knows best this might be a very controversial episode bro <laughs> I was wondering if it would be and I I was thinking, well, what angle could this be controversial through? You know where the, the, the controversy may be coming from? And I think this is why, at least I interpreted it a certain way. Mm. It's because, I could be completely wrong with my angle on this, but it's because it's a Muslim woman writing about Khabib, why men are supporting Khabib, with the assumption that men are dismissing women, you know? And men would dismiss women for, equal, for, for an equal scenario where a woman would be involved instead, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, and let that, me let me read that part because I feel like we're uh, miss. What's the word? Construing. Like I'm trying to visualize now. If there was like a, a, a I don't know, a niqabi guitarist, bro, like in a rock band, and then she came out and says something positive about Islam, would I be sharing that? I don't know. Would I think that the harm of sharing her positive message would then attract more people to the mm, rock band, the haram that they're up to? <laughs> yeah, 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 bro. And the only reason I say that is because I mm. saw something like that, bro, recently. I was flicking through something and I saw some story about some Niqabi rock star and I was like, yeah. this is confusing. But I then, think the reason equally, you, could, you could say that... Equally, that's the same scenario. You know, but you, you could say a rock band, yani, what in that is compatible with Islam? Mm. Like hardly anything. Yeah. Whereas fighting, just generally fighting, is good, yani. It's good the Sahaba used to fight, wrestle this and that. It's just the element of the, the haram environment, which, so, so these guys, so, so Habib in his whole career, he's only done 29 fights, which means 29 times he's been in that bad environment, right? Is that true? Uh, I think I, I, I think it would be in that sort of, are, that UFC fight yeah. sort of environment, 29, yeah. Yeah. So the rest of his life, he's not necessarily in that bad environment. So generally what he's doing is good and fine in Islam. The problem is the environment, which is not that often, and then the striking the face. 
Mm. So, you, you know, you see what I mean? I don't think it's really comparable. It's like it's, if, difficult, it, it's yeah. the same if we had a, a Muslim, like literally, bro, French Montana, like how much do people share French Montana versus Habib? Like Habib way more because French Montana, it's, it's a bit difficult to maybe find those kind of things to share, you know? I mean, his latest but, music video yeah. is not going to not going to work. But this is it. Sharing. Like, it's not, you know, you could argue music is the person and the person is the music, you know, that life's, but with fighting, like, that's kind of left in the arena and then they become whoever they are outside of it. Mm, Do you understand what I'm trying that's to say? subjective, though, I think. Yeah, to, well, because like you, only you because talk about Kanye, you know, Kanye was on the Joe Rogan recently, innit? and I didn't. That's why. I, that, I watched, yeah, like, that's why I, I got five minutes from. of that, and um, you know that that's I don't know how much he was talking really talking about music in that, and sometimes I I have watched these uh, rappers or whatever doing interviews, and and he's it's interesting sometimes, you know, depending what they're talking about. So hmm. you could separate them potentially. Depends who they are. Depends, both. Hmm. but I think generally, actually, we did a, had a good conversation. I don't think this is controversial. I think if you want contro controversial, you should go to our episodes about like feminism or maybe about Black Lives Matter. <laughs> yeah, but, oh god, I remember that. <laughs> but um, I, but I think it's just a, just a good conversation um, to discuss this because you know sometimes what happens is you read a headline or an article and you say, yeah, you're right, that is double standard, and you kind of get on with your day. But what yeah. we're doing here is we're kind of breaking it down and just like, you know, uh, yeah. uh, um, d d exploring it, exploring the topic. And I think that happens a lot, bro, with, with news and headlines. Like you just read the headline, idea goes in your head and you don't really examine it, right? Because you, you're literally just going about your day. You're, you're scrolling uh, through whatever, or you're just see, you know, you're on the tube and you see someone reading a paper, you see a headline yeah. and then you get on with your day. Your brain is not necessarily filtering how much truth is there to that headline. Um, so in this episode, you know, we kind of just broke it down and, you know, we could be wrong. We could be right. I think it's, I think it honestly is quite obvious though, like what mm. we're saying. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Inshallah, we'll wrap it up there. Inshallah. Uh, inshallah. Episode, episodes uh, 94. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Inshallah, good stuff coming up soon, inshallah. And I've said inshallah about what times <laughs> in the last thing. Why not? Uh, yeah, let us know any comments, suggestions, feedback. Uh, mindheistpodcast at gmail.com. Oh, no, yeah, or just go to mindheistpodcast.com and you'll find the different contact uh, uh, sections there. We will end it there, inshallah. Muhammad, uh, what would you like to say? Uh oh, someone said something for me there. Is it your your boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. It wasn't that loud um, in in this room. <laughs> oh, must be must be very late for him. He needs to go to sleep. You're right, yeah. I think he woke oh. up too late in the day, so oh, I think both of mine are asleep now, alhamdulillah. Anyway, um, look up look after your kids. That's my advice. I excellent. don't know. Not 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 just to you, but to everyone. <laughs> yeah, I was told today, Mohammed, that your first kid they're always going to be cute and babyish you know and even even when they're three four five it's they only stop being that when you have another one yeah and when you definitely. have another one then that that older one is halas is not a baby cute anymore He's, yeah definitely bro really okay. yeah interesting yeah even the way you treat them is a bit of a there's a subconscious element to them mm. um but we can we can talk about that next time inshallah inshallah yeah <laughs> Okay, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.